So dear colleagues, we are here now after two years, finally the last progress report, the last presentation, here we are. So my thesis, the up-to-date strategies in the injection therapy for the partial cufters and the prevention of C-acnes around the shoulder. My name is Victor Weininger and I am came from the orthopedic department, Semmelweis University. And we have two main topics. Both, them, both of them are systematic review and network meta-analysis. Let's talk about the, about the first one. The heal rate and combination are superior to steroid in injection therapy of the partial tear. It's good to know that the rotator cuff disorders are the most frequent disorders of the shoulder and the prevalence elevated with the aging. In our practice, the gold standard therapy is the, the subacromial corticosteroid injection, so the conservative treatment is the gold standard first. You know that corticosteroids have many side effects and we have some patients who mustn't have get some steroid injection in the shoulder. That's why our aim is compare the different substances used as the patient with the partial cuff tears. Partial rotator cuff tear was the population and we compared the cortico corticosteroid injection with the hyaluronic acid, PRP, the combination of dev, them, adipose drive regenerative cell and the cell line which is the placebo, which were the placebo. Our hypothesis that different injections have a similar efficacy but fewer side effects. So we made our selection and we have seven different full text. Let's talk about the first outcome, which is the visual analog scale for short term for four weeks after the, the first intervention. If you see the zero point is the saline, which is the placebo and the hyaluronic acid plus PRP was significantly better than the placebo saline. After six months, half year, there was no difference significance between the saline and the, the, the combination. But if you check the rank plot, you can see also the hyaluronic acid plus PRP was the best intervention to reduce the pain. Constant Murley score is 0 to 100 point, 100 is the best, 0 is the worst point. After three months, it also contains not only the pain, it also contains the, the movement of the shoulder. We can see that the PRP, hyaluronic acid, and the combination have a significant better result than the 0 point saline. But for, uh, from the baseline, after six months, there is no any significant difference. Uh, uh, the American shoulder and elbow surgeon shoulder score, it's about the pain, the movement of the shoulder, uh, non-steroid and opioid use of the patient, and uh, how can the patient use the shoulder. We can see that there was no significant difference compared with the, the saline, but also the hyaluronic acid plus PRP was the best intervention. Or strengths and limitation, this is the first our uh, network meta-analysis about this topic and we try to investigate only the partial tier. The limitation, we have only seven articles, the multiple active ingredients like steroid and PRP and uh, some paper we have a bad data reporting. In conclusion, we can say the hyaluronic acid, PRP and the, co and the combination have a clear positive effects in short term and the combination also showed better result after six months. Of course, we have a further RCTs need and we have to investigate only the partial tear. Based on the constant Merlin and ACES, it might be worse considering replace the steroid with other agent. The, my paper is under review. One of the review were accept it and we're still waiting for another reviewer to accept the, 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 check the paper. Let's talk about the second topic, the peroxy skin preparation reduce the incidence of sea acne around the shoulder. Uh, the most common organism after the shoulder surgery uh, is the sea acne and it's really important to emphasize that 
current surgical skin preparation and antibiotic prophylaxis ineffective against C. acnes. We have information that the peroxide solution could reduce the germ count of the C. acnes. So our clinical question, does the peroxide skin preparation reduce the incidence of the C. acnes around the shoulder? And our hypothesis, the peroxide, peroxide skin preparation reduces the germ count of the C. acnes around the shoulder. So we would like to compare the, the normal skin preparation and the additional uh, peroxide skin preparation. Less C. acnes leads to less subsequent infection. We have 10 different articles. And uh, if you check, we have seven different interventions, almost 1,000 patients compared. And if we check the, the graph, the 5% BPO, benzoyl peroxide solution, could significantly re reduce the prevalence of the C. acnes in the skin. It's really important it's in the skin. Not the dermis, not the intraarticular intra space, it's the skin. The BPO plus clindamycin was also very good, but there was no significancy compared with the non-intervention, -in with no intervention. So, of course, we have strengths and limitation. Uh, we evaluate not only the 5% BPO, also the combination, and also the 10% BPO we compared, and uh, we investigate the re reducing potential. 10 articles are not so much, we know, so we have to make further RCTs. And it's really important to emphasize that we have to check the dermis and the joint culture. We have an effective methods to reduce the C. acnes, and it's an advisable to supplement the alcohol-based skin preparation with peroxide solution, but we have to make some RCTs, more RCTs, and we have to find the, the best time frame to use the, the benzoyl peroxide solution. Yes, the same situation, we should use the BPO and have to find the, the optimal time frame. Thank you very much. And after, sorry, I have to ask, and I'm not ask, I have to thank you for my supervisor, Gabor Skalitsky. I have to thank you for Norbert Kovac and Silad Vancha, who are not here, but thank you for them, the help, and also my wife, who support me in bad and hard times. Thank you very much. In your first project, since, since you showed meta analysis and clinical and then the systematic reviews too, so, uh, you clearly show that actually that the kind of combined treat combination treatment of hyaluronic acid and PRP is, is, is better than the standard therapy. And then you also show that actually these beneficial eff effects actually disappear by six months. So question one is that how does it come to your treatment or your department's treatment? I mean, does it change anything? Question two, what, what is next? after six months. Yes, thank you. Thank you, the question. Question, it's a really good question because in my practice, I unfortunately, we can't use PRP in Hungary. It's, it's really important things. So in my practice, if the patient don't want steroid or have a, a hypertension or um, some contraindication, in that situation, I use hyaluronic acid. For long term, it's it's a really hard question because in our practice we ask the patient to go to the physiotherapist, and my opinion is the physiotherapist half for the patient. We th we try to reduce the inflammation and the pain, but the the very effective therapy is the physiotherapy. That's why I think after six months there is no significant difference uh, between the placebo and, and the combination. Thank you, nice. Um, looking at your statement in your abstract, that saline is superior to steroid for partia, partial tear there. Uh, in practice, the patients are coming to orthopod in two, three, four weeks time uh, after the tear. So in almost all of the time, some kind of inflammation is around in the shoulder. 
So I just cannot believe that the saline is superior to steroid, uh, if it is a pure one. But you have to be careful with the patient selection. I don't know where, what kind of patients you included into the study. If it is a pure tear, probably right. Okay. But patients are coming in a few weeks' time to you. Yes, totally agree with you. You are right. Actually, in these papers are only partial tear were only one paper we have. There was also uh, uh, impeachment syndrome, and this is a very hard question: why the saline don't have a bad effect, or why is not have a high effect than the steroid? It's a really good good question, and we are still looking for this information. One of our limitation I have to emphasize that. Uh, unfortunately, the steroid is not only triamcinolone, it was only methylprednisolone. So in, in, in Hungary, it's Camelog and Diprofos. So they use different steroid. It could be this heterogeneity also. It's th 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 that can lead this heterogeneity. Could we come back to the, 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 the statistical analysis of the three months, maybe? Yes. Yes. Uh, this uh, cutting line O, that means that uh, the saline, the yes. effect of the saline. So it means for me that uh, if I give steroid, it's uh, even worse that I give some saline into the uh, uh, joint space. And yes. and then <laughs> I agree with uh, Lati that uh, in my uh, everyday practice, it's no question that steroid uh, long-term steroid together with um, uh, physiotherapy uh, is a good option. Maybe not so good as uh, 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 hearing acid and PRP, but it's a good option. So I, 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 I don't believe that it is worse than I, I give a, a steroid, uh, a, a saline. I totally understand what you, you mentioned. Okay. Okay. Uh, How can I say? We have seven different articles. We have the data. And oh, yes. Yes. after the okay. data analysis, we can say that. Oh, okay, okay. So of it's course, a there, there could me. be a bias, but. Yes. How big was the patient cohort? So if you uh, edit together uh, uh, from the different papers, yes. Yes. how big was the patient cohort? We added all of the patient, all of the seven yeah. seven. How articles. many patients were included? 566. Okay. It's a yes. Large cohort. Yes, I think yes. it's a pretty large. Okay, and uh, exclusion criteria, inclusion criteria, yes, it was I, the same in all Maybe paper. I didn't mention it, but the, the exclusion criteria was the, if the patient have a full tear or tendinosis, tendinitis, we excluded them. It's really important that we exclude the full tear, the tendinitis and the tendinosis, but we didn't exclude the, the impeachment syndromes. So mainly the arthritis, the primary. Um, no, no arthritis. No, there was no any. any uh, we have no information. Was there any arthritis in this population? Okay, rotator cuff arthritis All, was not mentioned. No, not mentioned. Okay. Only MRI co uh, conveys partial there was uh, the population. I understand. Thank, Thank you. you. In contrast to my other colleagues, I don't like injections. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But uh, coming to the decolonization, it's more a little bit more interesting for myself. So when you looked at the decolonization of P. Agnes, which nowadays is a diff different name, by the way, you know, uh, it should be uh, called, uh, there's a different name now internationally used. in, in Propion yeah. Bacter is yeah. the old, old name of yeah, the yeah. C. Agnes. So uh, uh, what did you, uh, did you, this was, only done prior to surgery, right? This is not done the decolonization that you should do as we do in total joints the, the two or three days before the surgery. If I understood you correctly, in our practice, so the C acne uh, lives in the sebaceous gla gland. Yeah. And uh, the problem is when we cut the skin, yeah. then the sebaceous gland opened. Yeah. That's why I mentioned we have to make more RCTs to find the dermis and the intraarticular culture. 
Unfortunately, we have enough data only the the skin uh, skin culture. Yeah. And I think that's why the peroxide the BPO is very good because it can diffuse into the skin. In our practice until today, we use the hydrogen peroxide solution. But the problem with them it's only the uh, on the skin surface and the the very good thing at the BPO five percent BPO that it can it can diffuse in the sebaceous gland and it could reduce the C octanes germ in the sebaceous gland. But unfortunately, we have no enough information to show that pretty forest plot from the no. the dermis and the. I germ. agree. You just have to. Uh, I know. You, I agree. You just have to make sure the the reader later when you publish understands because you write down, if you have written below. So yes. this is, we start usually two or three days before the surgery in yes. order to decontaminate, as we did in the previous days, especially in total joint arthroplasty. We did only during the surgery. So I think this has changed in the recent mind setup in, yes, the, in the last exactly. years. Yes, in, in our department, we are trying to find the best way how can we give the paper to the patient before the surgery and uh, to ask the patient use t three or five days before the surgery the the benzoyl peroxide yeah. most clinics in germany now they give the patient the setup a set of octanezept or something like this to the patients two days before surgery and this should start two or three days before surgery yeah. and including decolonization of the mrsa in the nose so that we do it by for all the patients for total joints not not for smaller in interventions Thank you very much. Uh, my question is uh, is very close to Professor Kendoff. Uh, my question is that uh, that you mentioned that in the future uh, uh, time frame uh, should be uh, considered about how much and uh, and how days how many days would you uh, give uh, in order to achieve the, the decolonization? Theoretically, what how would you uh, perform it? So what yeah. would you do in our clinic, for example? Yeah. Our opinion is that these three mornings before the surgery would be the the best way to reduce the siacnes. So give the the patient or ask the patient to buy at the drugery the the benzoyl peroxide solution and uh, use it three mornings before the surgery. And uh, this is the the easiest way, I think, you know, in in our practice. Thank you very much for your question. Could you? Please back to the to the forest plot from the or the network plot from the three months. Yes. Okay. Uh, the question was why is it that the steroid treatment is uh, not so bad, uh, not so good as the saline? Okay, but uh, on the graph on the network graph, you can see that it was an indirect comparison, not a direct. Yes, so there was no any articles which compared directly the steroid with hyaluronic acid or saline or combination. But my statistical guy said that uh, the indirect uh, comparison is also very good. That's why we made the network graph or network meta-analysis because also the same um, results than the direct comparison. I don't know, he said that. Uh, he was right, but uh, you should uh, show that it was only one comparison and that that's the confidence interval is, uh, is quite uh, bright. Yes, yes. Bright, I guess. Yes, it thank you, Lambert. There is no difference between the two therapy. And uh, I have uh, only one question more. Okay, could you tell us what the P-score is? Yes, this is the ranking graph. And uh, one is the highest rank, zero is the worst rank. The If you check that the combination was the highest rank, that, that can uh, lead the best result. And uh, the red one leads to the worst result. That is the P-score. It is the same as the P-value or it is another one? Oh, it's another one. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>